Hey, I'm Michael, and in this Cricut tutorial for beginners, I'm showing you how to etch a Dollar Tree ceramic mug with Armor All glass etching cream. So let's get crafty. Now y'all, I am so excited about this video. I've actually seen a few different posts in my Cricut crafting community with Mr. Crafty Pants Facebook group. Yes, I know that is a complete and total mouthful, but I don't, I don't know what I was thinking whenever I made up the name for the Facebook group, which by the way is linked for you all down in that description box below. But I've seen some, some posts in there from some of my members showing that they have actually etched a ceramic mug with Armor All glass etching cream. And y'all, let me just tell you, my mind was blown. By the way, I will have those members that help me out with that. I'll have them listed right over here for y'all. But let's go ahead and get started into this Cricut magic. So the things that we'll need to make all this happen is obviously a mug, right? And I'm using this right here from the Dollar Tree. Super, super cheap, super affordable. At my Dollar Tree, it is still $1. I know so many people love to remind everybody that it's $1.25, but I promise you at my Dollar Tree, it is still a dollar, but heck, I mean, even $1.25 is still a pretty good deal for this. Also, we will be using some glass etching cream, this Armor Etch right here. We will also need some, some protection, right? We'll need some eye protection as well as some gloves. We'll also need some permanent vinyl and some transfer tape to actually create a stencil with our Cricut cutting machine. And we'll also obviously need an SVG cut file. We'll need a design to put onto that mug. And y'all know there's no better place to go than crafty.net is my own personal membership site where we now, by the way, we now have over 10,000 designs, 10,000 files on the site. And that's, that's SVG files, sublimation files, fonts, print and cut images, laser laser files. I mean, there's just so much goodness. So this is the file right here that we are using. It says coffee because punching people is frowned upon. Like I'm so obsessed with this. Like I'm absolutely obsessed with this SVG cut file. And there's just so many more like amazing files on the site. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. Plus, if you're not a member, I mean, heck, I mean, even if you are a member, but if you're not a member and you just wanna try out the files on the site, first go in there, register for a free account, then come up here towards the top of the screen, click on free products. And then you can basically go in here and download all 50 of these if you want to. You could also just download one if you wanted to. It's completely up to you. You do you, boo. So let me go ahead and come back over here to this page. And one of the many things I love about crafty.net is the one click download. So bada bing, bada boom. There we go. So now let's go ahead and hop over here to Cricut Design Space. And as you can see here, I have already downloaded this from crafty.net and uploaded it into Cricut Design Space. Now, if you're new to all this and you're not entirely sure how to do that, it's like how to download a file from a site and upload it into Cricut Design Space, I got you covered, boo. <laughs> Basically, I went through on the crafty.net YouTube channel and created a playlist where I go through on each video with a different device, download a file from crafty.net and upload it into Cricut Design Space. So I will have that linked for you all down in that description box below. So be sure to check that out. But as far as this goes, what we really need to do with this, first of all, is resize it to fit onto our mug. So let's go ahead and grab our little coffee mug here and a little tape measure. And basically, we just kind of want to get an idea of how big we can go with this design without running into any issues. Now with coffee mugs, especially since they are curved surfaces, but there's so many different types, like different shapes and sizes of coffee mugs out there. They're all a little bit different, right? However, the, the smoother, the more flat the coffee mug, the easier it's gonna be to actually apply vinyl to this. And we will be applying vinyl to this as a stencil for our Armor Etch glass etching cream. So what I wanna do is just go ahead and eyeball this and I'll show you what I look for with all of this. Now the maximum height for this, I would say would be around three inches. There's not a huge curve as far as this goes. So as far as it going down and laying uh, vertically, we're, we should be pretty good, just going with the full three inches if we wanted to. However, where the, the trouble kind of comes into play at is usually with it laying down horizontally around this way. So let's take a look at this. And I'm thinking that the easiest that we can get by with is probably around three inches or so for the width as well. So basically with the coffee mugs, the more round the coffee mug itself, the more difficult it's gonna to be to apply vinyl down to it. So keep that in mind. Also, you wanna make sure that you get a coffee mug that is very smooth to the touch. Also for this, 
it's very important for it to be a ceramic coffee mug. And again, I did get this from Dollar Tree. So let's come over here. And since we do know that we'll be using the whole three inch by three inch guide for this, we don't wanna go any, any larger than three inches by three inches with our design. Let's come over here and click on shapes. And I'm gonna create a template that will then be turned into a stencil. So let me come over here and grab this little square. And we can go ahead and just drag this over here. And what we need to do is resize this to be three inches by three inches. So let's come up here towards his size. I'll clear out the numbers next to width, hit three, enter, and bada bing, bada boom. Here we go, three inches by three inches. Now, it did go ahead and change that height to three inches since that little padlock is locked. So what I wanna do is go ahead and right click the square and then click on send to back. And then we can go ahead and grab our little design here bring it over here onto our little, our template. And then we can grab this little resize handle and then just shrink this down. All right, something in that right there should do the trick for us. So what I'll do now is go ahead and click and drag over our template and over our design itself. And with the, both of those selected, let's come down here towards the bottom right and click on slice. All right, so now we can go ahead and grab this little template, which is now our stencil, and we can just drag this out of the way. And, as you can see, it is now basically set up to be our stencil for our mug, which is just so freaking cool. I mean, am I right? Like, I'm obsessed. So now, basically with this over here, this is this is old news. We don't need this anymore. It's basically just trash. Let's go ahead and delete that out by clicking on this little X right up here. And then all we need to do is come up here towards the top right hand corner and click on make it. All right, so this is just the matte preview screen. We don't need to do anything with this. So let's go ahead and come down here towards the bottom right and click on continue. Now, while that's thinking, let's go ahead and apply our vinyl down to the cutting mat. Now, I am using the StarCraft HD, the permanent adhesive vinyl. Like, I just love this stuff. It is just so, so, so good. And it's so affordable, y'all. Please do not do yourself dirty by buying the Cricut brand of permanent vinyl. It is just way overpriced. and you don't need it. You can get, in my opinion, it's a much higher quality going with something like the StarCraft HD. That's also way more affordable, which is can be a little boggling to the mind, but I promise you. Plus, if you are a Crafty.net member, you get an extra 10% off of everything on, on 143vinyl.com except for sale items and the StarCraft Solo and the StarCraft Create software, which is just so freaking good, so amazing. And I'm just so obsessed that so many of y'all have said that you basically pay for your membership, your Crafty.net membership, with the savings that you get from 143 Vinyl, which is just so freaking good. Like I'm honestly in love with the site. Like I know that it's my site, but I'm just honestly so in love with it. That's why I created it in the first place because there's really nothing else out there quite like it. And just hold on to your britches because there's so many more amazing things coming very, very, very soon. So as far as the cut settings for this, let's go ahead and come over here and click on premium vinyl because I am using the original Cricut Maker. If you're using a newer Cricut device like the Cricut Maker 3 or Cricut Explore 3, for some reason, at the time of recording this, they don't have that same premium vinyl cut setting. They do have the premium vinyl permanent glossy, which I found to work pretty well for me. However, always do test cuts to make sure that's gonna work for you if you're using this same type of vinyl as well. All right, so once that little flashing go button starts flashing, let's go ahead and hit that for it to start cutting. All right, so it's all done cutting. Let's go ahead and unload that and then flip the mat over and then peel the mat away from that vinyl. All right, so let's go ahead and actually trim out our design from the rest of the vinyl. And by the way, y'all are obsessed with these scissors, which rightfully so, like they are honestly probably the best pair of scissors that I've ever, ever used. They are from Fiskars. I will have them linked for you all down in the description box below. So check that out. But um, hey, if y'all are uh, ever feeling a little bored, just looking for something to do, feel free to reach out to Fiskars and tell them that you would love to see a Mr. Crafty Pants collaboration because y'all, I would be so obsessed. All right, so we got that trimmed out. So let's go ahead and grab a little weeding tool like this right here. This is the pin pin weeding tool also listed and linked down below. But we're gonna go ahead and just weed out around our little template here. And then we can go in here and basically start weeding in reverse. So. What you're seeing here and now is just the template. So what we'll do is go in here and basically remove all the little bits and bobs, all the little pieces, all the letters to create the stencil for our mug. So let's just go in here and get her done. 
All right, so all done weeding all this little, all little bits and bobs out, as you can see right here. I'm sure you probably already guessed that basically, you probably want to steer away from mini designs for this, where there's gonna be a lot of little small intricate details to weed out, just because it can be a little bit of a pain to weed them out on the smaller scale. However, I, I feel like this did pretty good overall, so I'm happy with it. So let's go ahead and trim out some transfer tape to apply down to our stencil. And by the way, I am using the Caesar transfer tape for this. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and just burnish this down. And then we can go ahead and flip this all over and then peel the backing paper off of the vinyl and transfer tape. All right, so there we go right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just set this off to the side, sticky side facing up, obviously, <laughs> but we'll go ahead and grab our little coffee mug here. And I'm also gonna grab some isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol. I just recently found out that isopropyl alcohol and rubbing alcohol is not the same thing. Mind blown. All right, so let me go ahead and grab some of that and we'll wipe down the surface. Now, the reason why we do this in the first place is to basically get off any oil or grease, grime, dirt, anything on that on that cup that would prevent that permanent vinyl from properly adhering down to it. And we want to do that because we want to make sure that every little piece of vinyl is firmly adhered down to the cup or at least every little piece of vinyl that is directly around our design. All right, so what I also like to do with all of this is to actually grab a piece of parchment paper, cut it down to the, the approximate size as our stencil here. So as you can see, something like this. And basically, this is not only going to help prevent the permanent vinyl from adhering down to that mug a little bit too soon, but we can also put this through a little bit of a trial run and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So basically with this, as you can see, we can kind of lay this down and see how it's going to lay and basically contour to the curves of the mug before we ever even attempt applying it. So as you can see here, like this right here, this location is pretty good. We're having a little bit of this vinyl kind of bow up right down here in the middle. So what we're gonna do is go in there and just put in a few little slits around the transfer tape and vinyl, parchment paper, basically all of it. Just something like this right here, which should technically allow this to actually curve to the mug a little bit easier. And actually, I'm, while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and just trim off this excess parchment paper down here. And now let's try this again. Yeah, ultimately that lays down much, much easier. I mean, obviously it's not gonna be perfect since we are applying this down to a curved surface, but overall we can kind of still work with it and get it to where we want it to be. So per usual, if you've seen any of my videos before, per usual, I have a little bit of this, this uh, transfer tape and vinyl sticking out above where the parchment paper is. And basically what this is gonna allow me to do is position this properly onto the mug before committing to applying it so something like this. All right, so right about there is gonna do the job. So let me go ahead and grab my little squeegee and we can burnish down the top part or even just with your hands, you can just kind of push down the top part of that transfer tape. So something just like that right there. And that's basically just kind of holding it down or tacking it down in place temporarily. We can go ahead and lift up on the transfer tape and vinyl and then go ahead and remove that parchment paper from underneath. And then we can go ahead and lay, start laying this all down. With something like this on a curved surface, more often than not, I like to just use my hands versus a squeegee tool. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is go in here and very carefully start removing this transfer tape. Now, all of the vinyl isn't properly adhered down to this cup as of yet, and that's all right. Basically, what I'm going to do is go ahead and just get this extra layer out of the way. I just find that to be pretty helpful when going in here and applying something down to that curved surface, just so we can go ahead and kind of uh, Make sure that all of the all the bits and bobs, all the vinyl, especially all the vinyl that's surrounding areas that our design is cut out of, we want to make sure that that above anything else is properly, you know, adhered down to that cup to make sure that that etching cream isn't going to slide up underneath of it. All right. So once we got everything pretty much in place, any little area that we can't really get down with our hands, we can go in here with the little squeegee tool and then go in here and just kind of press that down. All right, so this is all adhered down pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my Armor Edge Cream and honestly just shake it up really, really good. All right, so now I'm just grabbing my rubber gloves and some little safety glasses like this right here. Safety always first, y'all. 
and then we'll go ahead and start applying this down with a little paintbrush. I know some people use a little foam brush. I honestly really prefer using a little paintbrush. I think it just, honestly, I just think it works better. Wow, these are, these are something. <laughs> All right, so I'm just using this little paintbrush again. I'm gonna go ahead and open up the Armor Etch Cream. Honestly, I think we could just use what is in this little cap after shaking everything up. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of give it a little swirl around. And basically we're gonna go in here and just kind of dab this and move this all around, constantly moving and pushing this Armor Etch glass etching cream all around this design for about five minutes or so. And I'm gonna go ahead and just time myself. And then once we do that, we can go ahead and apply another layer on top and then let that set for about 15 to 20 minutes. And this right here is about how much I have actually on here. And what I'll do is just go in here and just kind of keep moving this all around, moving it up, down, side to side, frontwards, backwards, I mean, any which way, just all over the place. And we're gonna do that for the whole like five minutes or so. Also, if you are worried about accidentally kind of pushing any of this cream off of the stencil itself, you could always go in here with some painter's tape and just kind of outline the outside of the stencil just to kind of add a little bit of extra protection on there. All right, so once that five minutes is up, let's go ahead and go back in here, grab a little bit more of that etching cream and then lay this down over all of it. And now we're just gonna let that set for about 15, 20 minutes or so. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes or so, so I'm gonna go ahead and just grab the mug and we'll go and wash all this off. All right, so here is the finished project. And as you can see, it is on the lighter or less noticeable side of things. And that's completely all right. It might be the look that you're wanting to go for, it may not be. However, I am gonna go in here and this is completely optional, but I'm gonna go in here and add some screen printing ink directly over top of the etched design. Now, once we wipe off the screen printing ink, the screen printing ink will stay behind onto the etched area. You will want to wait 24 to 36 hours before actually using the mug. And even then, you probably don't want to actually stick this in the dishwasher. You probably don't want to let this soak. You probably just want to hand wash only, and, and that's it. So what we'll do is go ahead and grab some, some Speedball, if I can talk, Speedball screen printing ink and apply it down to the mug. And when you are wiping this off, make sure you go with lighter pressure. All right, so now we just let this dry for about 24 to 36 hours and should be good to go. If you wanna learn how to best use your Cricut cutting machine, you may wanna consider stamping that subscribe button and also consider ringing that little bell for all of the notifications because I put out new crafty tips, tricks, and tutorials every single week. And I promise you do not want to miss out on a single crafty or Cricut or Glowforge or Sublimation or, I mean, there's just like so much crafty goodness and I promise you do not want to miss out on a single minute of it. And now if you did like today's episode, if you learned something new, consider stamping that like button and also dropping a comment down in the comment section below. It takes a couple seconds, it's free to do, and it helps me out so much here on this channel. So thank you so much in advance. Thank y'all for watching. I love all of y'all to the freaking moon and back. And until next time y'all, stay crafty.